Now if you run into a six foot two, send him my way. A brawny chap, a comfy lap, even if I have to pay. Cause tired of boobs, sick of jerks, I want a guy who really perks. Has anybody seen my guy? Um. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 148th Alumni Association Annual Meeting, especially to our amazing newest alums, the class of 2020. My name is Maria Masaitis, class of 1973. I'm also the proud parent to Sophia Apostola, class of 2004, and president of the Alumni Association of Mount Holyoke College. I am so grateful that so many of you are able to join us this year, I'll bet virtually. I miss being with you together in Chapin Auditorium and feeling the energy and excitement that descends upon campus during reunion weekends every year. I want to let you know that the portions of these meetings have been pre-recorded in order to deliver the best quality meeting possible. And we recommend that you watch in full screen mode. And before I go any further, on behalf of the Alumni Association staff and Board of Directors, I would like to take a moment to acknowledge the continued attack on Black lives and all of those who are personally affected by these acts of violence towards the Black community. We hear you, we see you, and our hearts are with you. Our marginalized and vulnerable communities have our support, solidarity, and commitment to do more in our efforts to address longstanding systematic issues of racism and disenfranchisement. In thinking about this meeting today, I wondered if it was not the first time in our long history that the annual meeting has not been held as scheduled. And I learned that there have been a few other times when events in the world led to changes in our celebration. In 1918, during that year's flu epidemic, the class of 1913 gave up returning to campus for their fifth reunion, deciding instead to send a donation of $705 to the Red Cross for a kitchen trailer to be brought to France, marked by a metal plate inscribed, Mount Holyoke College. And during World War II, the annual meeting of the Alumni Council, as we were then called, was canceled in 1943, 1944, and 1945. Only classes prior to 1900 returned to South Hadley to celebrate reunions during those years. Later, after the war ended, the classes of 1918, 1919, and 1920 were given the option to hold makeup 25th reunions in 1946. I would like to take a moment to extend my deepest sympathy to any of you who has lost someone during this pandemic. I look forward to the time when we can all be together on campus again. All of you here watching from your homes across the world continue to do Mount Holyoke proud in your local communities, in your families, on the national stage and in the world. I am honored to represent you along with hundreds of volunteers and our board of directors who I would normally ask to stand in a show of recognition. Today, I will send my gratitude to the hundreds of past and present board members of the Alumni Association and current and past trustees of Mount Holyoke College. Among that group is an alumna who I was looking forward to presenting with the Mary Graham Davis Leadership Award this year. This award established and presented to Mary on the occasion of her 50th reunion in 2015, honors an alum whose inspired visionary leadership goes above and beyond routine volunteerism in order to advance the mutual interests of both the college and the alumni association. Five years later, we once again recognize a member of the class of 1965 with this award, only the second time it's been given. 
Susie Bayers Betzer has spent decades sharing her exceptional loyalty, dedication, service, and leadership with Mount Holyoke. Among the many roles she has held over the past decade, Susie was president of the Alumni Association during a pivotal moment in our history. I know that all of you join me in thanking Susie for her exceptional leadership and that you send your congratulations to her as I do. And there is one more alum who I would like to take a moment to recognize. Mindy McWilliams Lewis, class of 1975, would have celebrated her 45th reunion this year. Mindy was a valued friend to the Alumni Association and the college and was getting ready to step into the role of chair of the Mount Holyoke Board of Trustees at the time of her death last summer. Mindy was brilliant in identifying groups that should and needed to be brought together and motivated and facilitated their interaction. I know many of you miss Cindy as much as I do. I was so looking forward to extending a special welcome to the alums who plan to join us from the class of 1945 for their 75th reunion. And greetings to the class of 2018 back for their second year reunion. And finally, I would like to welcome their sister class, the newest alums to our ranks, to the amazing members of the class of 2020. Next, you will hear from Mount Holyoke President Sonia Stevens, who as many of you know, has not only served as the college's leader since 2018, but she is also an honorary member of the class of 1955. And this past weekend, was also made an honorary member of the class of 1965. Thank you for joining us today. It is truly an honor to be a member of this community. Thank you, Maria. Uh, I'm so pleased to have this opportunity to be with you. While it is far from what we planned and hoped for as a joyous return to campus and to friendships old and new, it's no less an expression of the community that we are the bonds that form out and through Mount Holyoke and the spirit that binds us together. And if ever that spirit were needed, it's now. The pandemic, the very thing that keeps us apart now, that has kept us from each other and from the celebrations, but for the, for the graduates, their families and friends, mark sacrifices, hard-earned accomplishments and success. And for you all, the celebration of the years, the opportunities and the challenges marked since that very same achievement and the welcome to the class of 2020 to your number and membership is also a reminder of deep and systemic inequity. The pandemic has taken a deadly toll on individuals and communities of color and the recent and persistent violent and senseless killings of black individuals, the violence and unrest of this moment are a call to our individual and to our collective conscience. Black lives matter. Safety, freedom, the right to life itself matter, and we must not let this moment pass with customary denial and without making the changes in our own lives and in communities, organizations, and systems that make the unrealized promise of liberty and justice for all a reality. I will redouble my efforts and those of the college to listen, to make change, and bring about the kind of social transformation that is long overdue and that is the basis for true community. I've come to know Mount Holyoke differently through your stories and through your class histories, another cherished tradition of ours and the very heart of this annual meeting. Let those stories, your stories, speak truths for us to reckon with and let there be listening, empathy and reconciliation in, in, in the action that those truths require and on all of our hearts. As we gather virtually today, you join from near and far in both time and place. And we're so glad to have this time with you. I know many classes are celebrating or have celebrated with virtual events leading up to and following this annual meeting. It has been such a privilege to share in your joy and reunion at some of it, on some of those occasions. You've really covered some ground together over many years. And as you connect in whatever ways you can in this moment, my hope for each of you 
is that you will renew your ties to each other and to the college in ways that reignite in you memories and excitement, the joy and intellectual stimulation of your college years, as well as the commitment to social justice that is woven into the fabric of Mount Holyoke. An alumna once said to me, Mount Holyoke seeps into your blood and is something you never get over. And I keep coming back to this statement. I really believe it to be true. I hope that you and that I never get over Mount Holyoke. While I don't have the honor of being an alumna, as you just heard from Maria, it is a special privilege to be members of the classes of 1955 and 1965. And, and most of all, to work with you and for this exceptional college. You, our alums, are the living embodiment of the power of a Mount Holyoke education and experience. You are ambassadors in the wider world. You are our strongest advocates spreading the word in your communities and workplaces about just how remarkable Mount Holyoke really is and how much better this country and our world can be. So thank you. Thank you for your loyalty, for your presence here today, for who you are, for all that you've done, for what you represent, for your commitment to and support of Mount Holyoke College as we navigate this the most difficult of times together. Thank you for everything. Thank you, Sonia. And now we begin the business portion of this meeting. The, minute, the minutes of last year's annual meeting have been posted on the Alumni Association website for your review. I would now like to turn your attention to a poll commented on your screen to entertain a motion to accept the minutes. Please take the next few moments to vote your acceptance or rejections of the minutes as posted. Thank you. The poll has now closed. Motion is accepted. The chair of the Mount Holyoke Alumni Association's nominating committee, Donetta Boshaw, class of 1988, will now present the nominating committee's report. Thank you, Maria. A notice about recommended bylaw updates and the slate of new board and committee members was published in a May e-newsletter, and the full and updated text of both is available online. You will now see a second poll prompted on your screen to entertain a motion to accept the bylaws. Please take the next few moments to vote your acceptance or rejection of the bylaws as posted. Thank you. The poll has now closed. Motion is accepted. Next, we will vote to approve the proposed slate of officers and committee members. Before a motion to accept the slate is provided, I'd like to present the 2020 nominees, who are as follows on the two slides you're about to see. You will now see a third and final poll prompted on your screen to entertain a motion to accept the slate of proposed officers and committee members. Please take the next few moments to vote your acceptance or rejection of the slate as proposed. Thank you. The poll is now closed. Motion is accepted. We now start the part of the program that is a favorite for many of us, the reading of the class histories. Throughout the meeting, we will invite presidents from five different classes to offer us a perspective on the similarities among and the differences between generations of Mount Holyoke graduates. More class histories are shared on the Alumni Association's website for viewing at any time. We will begin with two classes that span 50 years of Mount Holyoke tradition. Classes that have gotten to know each other over the past few years, and many of whom will meet face to face when they are able to return to campus. This will be followed by a presentation by Cassandra Jolly, who serves as Vice President for Advancement and Acting Vice President of Communications and Marketing. Reading now, 
for the class of 1970 is Ann Berkey. And for the fabulous and welcome new graduates of the class of 2020, Olivia Vicek. Hi, I'm Ann Richardson Berkey, president of the class of 1970. We arrived in the fall of 1966 and the Vietnam War, civil rights, black power, and the sexual revolution were headline news. At convocation, we heard that now familiar expression, uncommon women. As freshmen, we had classes six days a week, house mothers in every dorm, and a curfew. We spent hours studying and wrote papers on typewriters in dorm dining rooms, often all night. For fun, we played bridge, knitted, did the New York Times crossword puzzle together, and listened to the Beatles, Bob Dylan, Judy Collins, among others. We met for burgers at the CI and ice cream at Glessie's and raced to our dorms by nine o'clock for MNCs and maybe leftover desserts. In the fall, we were often entertained by the spontaneous appearance of men's college sports teams. We hitchhiked to bars and events in the valley and danced barefoot on Skinner Green to the music of the age of Aquarius. Our junior show was We Can Save the World or Lighten Up, Get Your Act Together, and many of us are still doing that. The historic events of the late 60s were our current events, the assassinations of Bobby Kennedy and Martin Luther King, freedom riders in the South, the moon landing, the first Earth Day. Many of us joined the new feminist movement. Some embraced gay pride. In February 1970, black students occupied seven campus buildings demanding better representation. By May, opposition to the Vietnam War had intensified. Fueled by the Cambodian bombings and the Kent State shootings, many of us joined the nationwide student strike. Some departments waived the comprehensive exam. Commencement was almost canceled. The Laurel Parade did not happen, and many classmates wore black armbands to graduation. Some disagreed and were activists in a different way, the true measure of a liberal arts education and critical thinking. The intellectual discipline of our years at Mount Holyoke taught us to be engaged and to listen, and today we are continuing to leave our mark on the world. The bond we formed 50 years ago continues to make us the thoughtful, discerning, articulate, and yes, uncommon women we are today. When we arrived on campus, it was sticky and humid out, and we were excited for what Mount Holyoke held for us. Fresh off the success of the U.S. in the 2016 Summer Olympics in Rio de Janeiro, we packed into the amphitheater decked out in blue for our first convocation. We met all different sorts of offices and departments, met our advisors for the first time, and explored new clubs, sports, and organizations. President Stevens officially went from acting president to president of the college, and we got our first DEI officer for the school. During our time on campus, we experienced these historical, international, and domestic events. 2016 was a leap year, which started a period of tumultuous and unpredictable events for our class. In November, Mount Holyoke stood witness to the election of Donald Trump, making him the 45th president of the United States. We watched as viruses and diseases like West Nile, Zika, and Triple E ravage the world in our country but we also saw hope as the Ebola crisis ended. We got to experience a solar eclipse and we protested in the Black Lives Matter movement. We participated and marched in the largest single day protests in history at the Women's March, and we experienced the fourth impeachment of a US president in American history. We watched the Syrian war tear countries and people apart and saw the UK split from the EU and Brexit. Finally, in our last year of college, we saw our country infected by a global pandemic. The COVID-19 virus officially ended our senior year far too early, but brought us together in a historical event that no other class has known. This is how we spent our free time on campus. We were the last class to experience a full year of decentralized dining, and we got to eat at the Prospect patio, having lunch with Jorge. We knew the stress of those Blanche paper slips and counting up the prices of our food until we hit that magical 750. We spent our days sprawled out on the green, taking in the sun or building snowmen in the winter. We slid down the hills of the Dells on our makeshift sleds and ran to the newly created Super Blanche, for our fifth snack of the day. 
We went to all sorts of talks and got to see people like Senator Elizabeth Warren, professional soccer player Abby Wambach, and former Secretary of State John Kerry. We experienced what was Waka Flocka Flame and our, at our first and only spring concert. We stayed in contact with our friends and class through FaceTime and social media like Instagram. We engaged in classroom debates and heated discussions and spent all nighters doing way too much homework. No matter how much our two classes may be different, we know that Mount Holyoke is always what brings us together, no matter how far we are apart. Mount Holyoke forever shall be. Greetings. I'm delighted to be able to join you today in solidarity and celebration. My name is Cassandra Jolly, and I serve Mount Holyoke as Vice President for Advancement and Acting Vice President of Communications and Marketing. This gathering looks very different from the celebration that we were planning just a few short months ago. Typically, I would deliver this address standing on a stage in Chapin Hall, looking out at a sea of incredible Mount Holyoke graduates, dressed in your whites, with an array of accessories in your class colors, from red feather boas to lovely blue bags, to yellow superhero capes, to giant green sunglasses, to purple glitter headbands. And while I'm disappointed not to be with you in person, the memory of reunions past and anticipation of those yet to come are with me now. While these past few months have been filled with uncertainty, what remains certain is the strength of Mount Holyoke and the alum connection. Since the beginning of this public health outbreak, I have been heartened to see alums eager to support the Mount Holyoke community at every turn, whether through mask sewing tutorials, webinars, job and internship opportunities, encouraging messages, or by providing vital financial support, we have seen proof time and time again of the strength and commitment of the Mount Holyoke network. And in recent weeks, the weaponization of police and continued attacks on black lives are a further call to individual and collective anti-racism action. Black Lives Matter. Together, alums, your association, and the college act to ensure absolutely that Mount Holyoke students are able to achieve their full potential and to bring the gifts that have been nurtured and cultivated here at Mount Holyoke into the world. It is difficult for me to fully take in the impact that the current pandemic will have on our communities. And yet we can be certain that Mount Holyoke students are fully prepared to adapt to the changing world around them. The skills that they developed in critical thinking, creative problem solving and leadership will serve them well in the coming months and years. As the graduate of both a women's college, Simmons University, formerly Simmons College, and a girls high school, I too have had the great privilege of a transformational experience, of being among peers and mentors who on so many occasions saw more potential, intellectual beauty, and humane gifts in me than I saw in myself. They helped me nurture an independent voice and earn an independent livelihood. And in my professional role, I have the unique responsibility and joy of facilitating your commitment and action to the mission of Mount Holyoke. So today, on behalf of the college, and most importantly, on behalf of the students who benefit from your gifts, I thank you for all that you do for Mount Holyoke. I know this has been a trying spring for many, and so it is with deep gratitude and appreciation that I recognize and celebrate the generous financial contributions our community has made this fiscal year. It's my pleasure to share that to date, this fiscal year, with three weeks left to go, 8,653 alums, parents, and friends have made gifts to the college, totaling more than $11 million. Reunion classes have demonstrated their loyal support with gifts totaling $2.35 million. And of special importance, particularly as we navigate the consequences of the pandemic on the college's budget, our gifts to the Mount Holyoke Fund, which support the areas of greatest need and potential each and every year. To date, 7,800 alums have joined together to invest 7.2 million and counting in the Mount Holyoke Fund, all in support of current students. On behalf of the college, I would also like to extend a very special thank you to the Alumni Association. 
recognizing the significant financial challenges that the college is facing as a result of the pandemic, the association generously gifted $250,000 to the Mount Holyoke Fund earlier this spring. The college is incredibly grateful for our strong partnership with the association and the entire network of alums. I'm also incredibly proud to share that since mid-March, more than 1,000, 1,000 Mount Holyoke community members, including alums, families, faculty, staff, and students, many of whom had already generously supported the college, also stepped forward to raise more than $300,000 specifically for the Student Emergency Relief Fund. Always quick to advocate for each other, the Student Government Association generously gave $75,000 from their remaining budget to support their fellow students. With the support of the entire Mount Holyoke community, the college was able to offer special financial assistance to more than 500 students impacted by the COVID-19 outbreak. To be sure how much alums give is equally important to the fact that we give to our alma mater consistently each and every year in times of celebration and in times of challenge. The Laurel Chain Society honors those donors who, year after year, make gifts of any amount to any fund to support the college. We are grateful to all of you whose consistent support has been and will continue to be critical to advancing our mission, particularly as we continue to navigate uncharted waters. While we are all gathered virtually, we must take the opportunity to honor and recognize the remarkable 50th reunion class of 1970, whose affection dedication, and respect for Mount Holyoke is palpable and tangible. The 50th reunion gift effort is a labor of love, sustained by its own large, enthusiastic, and seemingly tireless group of volunteers. To that end, I would like to extend my thanks and congratulations to the great class of 1970 50th reunion gift team, with special recognition for the three co-chairs Susan Ellis, Jean Olson, and Martha Doolittle McIver. During the past five years, your inspirational leadership has guided your class and the college to great success. I'm pleased to share that during the last five years, the class of 1970 has raised 5.6 million for all purposes at Mount Holyoke College. Of that, 1.9 million was raised specifically in support of the Mount Holyoke Fund. Furthermore, the class of 1970 can boast a five-year giving participation rate of 75%. Thank you again to the class of 1970 for your generous and loyal support of the college. Each year at Reunion, we also celebrate the fundraising achievements of Reunion 1 and Re Reunion 2 classes with the awarding of the Lion, Sphinx, Griffin, and Pegasus Awards. These accolades have been earned for fundraising achievements this year and for gains made in the years since your last reunion in 2015. Here is a look at Sphinx, Pegasus, Lion, and Griffin Awards and the winners for Reunion 1 classes. Now, here is a look at Sphinx, Pegasus, Lion, and Griffin Award winners for Reunion 2 classes. The college is so grateful for your support. Thank you. Please visit the link shown on these slides for additional celebration of reunion fundraising successes. You will also find this link on the Alumni Annual Meeting Program page on the Alumni Association website. Last, and certainly not least, there is a special place in our hearts for those of you who step forward, not only with your own gifts, but who agree to take on the joyful, but hard, work of encouraging others to invest. So allow me to thank all of our volunteers head class agents, class agents, and gift committees in particular. Thank you so much for the opportunity to recognize your philanthropic investments in Mount Holyoke and to serve your incredible alma mater. 
In closing, I invite you to watch a short video presentation that reaffirms all you make possible. Following the video, you will hear the class of 1995 and 2015 as they read their class histories. It is a certain type of person that goes to Mount Holyoke. Very caring about the others around them, caring about issues in the world, as well as caring about Mount Holyoke. The school is so special, and I really can't pinpoint why, but the students know that and the alums know that. There's just so much going on here. It almost feels as if the space is too small to contain all of the visions that we have. We've kept a lot of the same traditions, but we've also been able to adapt to how the world is changing around us too. As we become more globalized uh, as a society, I think it's essential that we can figure out how to be connected and still be different. I think that that's one of the reasons why the mission of Mount Holyoke and why bringing women from around the world is so critical to our success. I knew when I came to Mount Holyoke that part of what you're tapping into is this really great alumni network that is so eager to reach back and give you a helping hand. We are all supported by people who came before us. We can then turn around and support future generations of Mount Holyoke students. It's just very reassuring that in this world, like, women are supporting women. Everything about being in a space where women have agency, where they're empowered, where women are in leadership roles everywhere, you take that into the world as alum and you transform places where you work. One of the great advantages of the alumni network is that it enables students to project themselves into a future and to see themselves as the same kind of leaders as the alumni are now. your support in time and energy and financial resources that allow us to provide an outstanding academic education for our students. Without the alums being as generous as they are, we couldn't be as creative and as cutting edge as we are. Alumni giving has been critical, um, I would say, for the college. It is really kind of the blood of what gets the college pumping and really provides us to be able to move and transform and that has been really critical for our students. Rebecca Gold, class of 95 president. When we arrived in 91, many of us didn't bring a computer. Each dorm had a computer room with two Macs and two PCs. We had to allow enough time for the dot matrix printer to do its work before separating the perforated pages and tearing off the hold edges. Some of us would kill time in the smoker while it printed. A smoker was the common room in each dorm that was designated for smoking. They disappeared after our first year. Something else that disappeared right before we started was the tradition of student workers having to serve food to the tables of fellow students. Those of us who worked in the kitchen were happy about that. Each dorm had a bell desk and working there was a plum job. You could sit and study or chat with friends who visited. You'd buzz in anybody who rang the dorm bell and call up to announce guests. Students escorted males upstairs. Everybody ate breakfast, dinner, and MNCs in their dorm dining rooms. There were seven lunch centers across campus. Blanchard was in no way as bustling a place then as it is now, but our P.O. boxes were housed in the basement, so it was a campus hub. No day was complete without a trek there to check for mail. On a good day, would find a handwritten letter from a friend. On a really good day, would find a care package. On most days, would find flyers for campus events. We got email addresses towards the end of our time at MHC, but the internet didn't offer much. Our research always took place in the library in the form of microfiche and other materials. Of course, we had no cell phones, but it was easy to connect. We left notes on each other's doors and called each other's rooms. We had no Google, but we used drinking glasses to ding with silverware during meals to share news or ask for information. I remember using this method in Ham Hall one day to confirm the rumor of someone's death, although I don't recall if it was Kurt Cobain or River Phoenix. 
We stuck with plans and left some meetings to fate. If we were trying to find a particular person, we'd just roam around campus looking for her. Her, she, women, or maybe women with a Y. We learned that sex was nature and gender a construct. We had enlightened ideas about gender, but those ideas were binary. During our time in college, headlines included Nelson Mandela, the LA riots, Rodney King, Anita Hill, Waco, the World Trade Center bombing, the Oklahoma City bombing, Nancy Kerrigan, and OJ. Bill Clinton was president, but we didn't hear the name Monica Lewinsky until after we graduated. Our commencement weekend was beautiful and special because it marked the end of Elizabeth Tennant's presidency. Hi everyone, this is Hannah Yee, the 2015 class president, and I'm here to read our class history since we can't be together this May. So here goes. When we arrived on campus, Hurricane Irene had just pummeled the East Coast, and the Halloween snowpocalypse was just around the corner. We, at the time the largest class in the college's history, came from the farthest reaches of the globe and settled into our new rooms, which were aptly described as palaces by the Princeton Review. Our diversity brought us together under a common goal, to uncover the ways that this small school in Western Massachusetts could help us do as our founder urged us, to go forward, attempt great things, and accomplish great things. During our time on campus, we experienced many historical international and domestic events, including the Black Lives Matter movement. We rose up and we joined the movement with fervor and energy showing that Mount Holyoke students stand up for each other and for what's right. We watched the first Black president get reelected. We followed the Curiosity rover's journey after successfully landing on Mars. And we witnessed history as our alma mater announced that it would accept applications of trans and non-binary applicants. And this is how we spent our free time while we were on campus, in case you've forgotten. We danced the night away at what became to be the last ever Vegas night, R.I.P., we spent countless hours lingering after dinner, conversation carrying us far past the dining hall's 7 p.m. closure. We cheered our friends through athletic victories and defeats. We stargazed at the top of the Dells Hill, and we watched the seasons change from the Upper Lake docks. We relished in the luxury of having continental breakfast available to us in our dorm common rooms daily, at least until our senior year. Even in the most simple moments, we were learning from each other, challenging each other, growing together, and sharing countless Chef Jeff cookies along the way. Cheers to all the reunion classes of 2020 and cheers to the 2020 graduates of Mount Holyoke. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Nancy Bellos Perez. I'm a graduate of the class of 1976, and I'm the executive director of the Alumni Association. Thanks to you all for joining us today in this really unprecedented year. Even though we all can't be together, it was so important for us to be able to present the Alumni Association Awards to some very deserving alums. Your collective recommendations are critical to our process of identifying candidates, and the volunteer award committees take tremendous care and conduct extensive research in selecting award candidates. Today, I will be announcing the award winners in each category, but to learn more about each of the awardees, please read their full citations on the Alumni Association's website. We will also honor them in the summer quarterly and we'll be sending each award winner their citation and award in the mail as soon as we're back on campus. The remarkable alums receiving the Achievement Awards have truly embodied the values and virtues set forth by the college through their accomplishments and service to society. This award recognizes work that exemplifies the ideals of a liberal arts education that demonstrates professional distinction, sustained commitment and or creativity, and that reflects the vision and pioneering spirit of Mary Lyon. For their outstanding achievements, the Alumni Association is pleased to present the Achievement Award to the following alums. Rosemary Marshall Johnson, Class of 1960. Helen DeFossis, Class of 1965. Pam Gilles Bailey, Class of 1970. Joelle Frank, Class of 1970. Lila Girish, Class of 1970. 
Susan Kerr, class of 1975, Lydia J. Young, class of 1975, Priscilla Payton, class of 1980, Kavita Nandini Ramdas, class of 1985, and Marsha Hoffman, class of 2000. This year, we are recognizing six remarkable graduates with the Alumni Medal of Honor, presented to alums for their eminent service promoting Mount Holyoke and the Alumni Association through consistent and broad-based leadership, service, and dedication over ex an extended period of time. The Alumni Association is pleased to present the 2020 Medal of Honor to Charlotte Church, class of 1970. Nancy Sun, class of 1980. Anne Blake, class of 1985. Karina Strella, class of 1990. Ashanta Evans Blackwell, class of 1995. And Radley Eames, class of 2000. I am pleased to present our newest award, the Innovator Award. This award, presented only once before, celebrates alums who demonstrate creative leadership by identifying an opportunity or need and capitalizing on it through a new initiative, program, direction, or collaboration in support of the values of the Alumni Association and the college. For her devotion to Mount Holyoke, and her outstanding accomplishments, the Alumni Association is pleased to present Kim Hunter, class of 1975, with the Innovator Award. This year, I'm proud to present the Elizabeth Topham Kennan Award for outstanding contributions to the field of education to two passionate supporters of a liberal arts education and champions for educational access. For their tireless commitment, the Alumni Association is pleased to present the Elizabeth Topham Kennan Award to Julie Solso Gulick, class of 1970, and Lynn Pasquarella, class of 1980. I'll now recognize the recipients of the Loyalty Award and the Volunteer Leadership Award, the latter recognizing an alum who has graduated in the last 15 years. These amazing volunteers serve on committees, organize club and class events, raise funds for Mount Holyoke, help plan reunions, and much, much more. For their exceptional loyalty, the Alumni Association is pleased to present the Loyalty Award to the following alums. Jean Angelili Mahoney, class of 1960. Bev Harrison, class of 1965. Bonnie Penny Ulrich, class of 1965. Helen Elizabeth Diesenhaus, class of 1970. Susan Ellis, class of 1970. Diane Mayer Murphy, class of 1970. Judy Carlin Stein, class of 1975. Frances Hyun Suk Lee, class of 1985. Jackie Mariamudo, class of 1990 and Perrin McCormick Menashe, class of 1990. The Volunteer Leadership Awards for graduates within the last 15 years go to Tirana Bhatia and Casey Accardi, both from the class of 2015. Finally, I would also like to recognize this year's Mary Lyon Award recipients. Olifia Somji, class of 2009, Mei Yang, class of 2010, and Chamba Chilemba, class of 2017. All three were recognized in April at the Student Leadership Award virtual celebration. 
to all awardees, congratulations, and thank you all so very much for representing Mount Holyoke so well in the world. We celebrate you and thank you for demonstrating to all of us the value and the beauty of a Mount Holyoke education. Also to everyone on the call, thank you for taking the time for joining us today. We missed seeing you in person last month. We hope you are well, and we so look forward to when we can all be back on campus together. I would also like to take this minute to thank everyone personally for the absolute joy and honor it's been to be the Executive Director of the Alumni Association for the past four and a half years. I can't thank you enough. I've enjoyed getting to know and meet so many of you. I will be retiring shortly and look forward to continuing to serve Mount Holyoke as a volunteer for many years to come. Thank you. Before we adjourn, we will hear from the class of 1945, followed by a performance by the MNCs as they lead us in singing the alma mater to close the meeting. Then we will turn to the virtual Laurel Parade in its entirety. Over 1,000 alums have submitted a picture in their whites after Kathy Rohde from the class of 1994 put out a call to action on social media. Many thanks to Kathy, to the volunteers who helped her compile all the pictures, and to Janencia Wood from the Alumni Association's team for partnering in creating this virtual Laurel Parade for the very first time. This is a labor of love and we will play the full parade to close the meeting. It's over 10 minutes long, but we will play it and we will then make it available to all both on the Alumni Association website and on social media. Thank you to all. And here now, very fittingly, before the Laurel Parade, we will turn the meeting over to Betty Aldman Mittman from the class of 1945 to share their class history. Thank you. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to share with you some of my special feelings and college experiences, as well as expressing my gratitude for being a Mount Holyoke College alumni. College always brings up in us the serious question of what do I want to do with my life? President Ham put it this way, this student body is composed of very smart women and it is their responsibility to use these gifts in some way that helps other people. I feel that not only did we agree with them, but some of us had come to college in order to explore learning, discover our talents, and prepare ourselves for the world. We didn't come to be protected. We came to be prepared. We arrived in September of 41 and began exploring the beautiful campus, making new friends and discovering new activities. But one late Sunday afternoon, December 7th, our life changed. A student came running down the hall shouting, the Japanese had bombed Pearl Harbor. Of course, everyone was very upset and wondered what this would mean. I was in chemistry the next day and heard President Roosevelt say that it was a day of infamy and proceeded to de declare war on Japan and Germany. It was done. We were the war class, 1941 to 45. How did this affect us? The women employed for dining room work and cleaning were dismissed so they could be part of the women's workforce. They became an important part of the war effort. Result to the students was that we would now do the cleaning of our own room and do the kitchen and dining room work as well. CLAP was equipped to be the place we would go in case of an air raid. The windows had brown paper on them. In order to save heat, the heat cop program was started. We took turns getting up at 4 a.m. 
to close all the windows in the dorm. It was not our favorite activity. At the government's request, North and South Rockefeller were used for the Navy, a WAVES training program. About 100 WAVES lived there. In 1945, the government also asked us to cancel spring vacation to save oil and gas for the war effort. But when the government took over Amherst College for the training of West Point cadets, age 16 or younger, our potential social life was seriously impacted. The result was that we had to make our own fun and our relationships became much deeper. Then the last straw, our diplomas were lost in the mail. After four years, we received empty covers and the message in them was, do not place place in cedar chest. Meanwhile, all of us had people that were or could be in harm's way. So it was a sobering time and a uniting time. I have never seen the country as united as it was during World War II. And it pains me because I have lived and know what good things can be done when we are united. To sum it all up, I love Long Hoyo. In the 50s, I was an instructor of chemistry at the college. And in 66, I was assistant director of the summer ABC program. And at 96, I still love being able to say, I went to Mount Hoyo. Thank you. O Mount Holyoke, we pay thee devotion in the fervor of youth that is strong. The courage of right is thy garland, our lives alma mater thy song. So from east and from west now we gather, and united in firm love to thee. All years are as one, and their loyal pledge, Mount Holyoke forever shall be. we can give. So when soft in a whisper thou callest for the treasures unlocked by thy key, our achievements, our hopes, and our glorious faith shall answer Mount Holyoke to thee, shall answer Mount Holyoke to thee. Marching, marching, we battle to form. 
men. For they are women's children, and we mother them again. Our lives shall not be sweated from birth until life closes. Hearts starve as well as bodies. Give us bread, but give us roses. As we go marching, marching, unnumbered women dead, go crying through our singing, their ancient call for bread. Small art and love and beauty, their drudging spirits knew. Yes, it is bread we fight for, but we fight for roses too. As we go marching, marching, we bring the greater days. The rising of the women means the rising of the race. No more the drudge and idler, tend that toil where one reposes. Or pat us on the ass, cause what we think do not presume that you will know. 
And if you think we can't succeed, just watch, see where we go. We're doctors and we're senators, we're getting PhDs. We're running our own businesses and raising families. We are, we are, we are, we are, we are the feminists. We're finding our own power and we're fighting prejudice. Some still want all women pregnant, maybe even barefoot too. But we'll make our own decisions now. We're wearing real nice Yeah.